Okay, our first question on this video is from PensyFan19, who clearly prides himself or herself on being the first to comment on this particular video. And they asked, what is my favorite catch, what is my favorite diesel model, and what are my thoughts on passenger service to Scranton? Well, as far as my favorite diesel model is concerned, it's the SD40 T-2 tunnel motor. As far as my thoughts on passenger service to Scranton are concerned, that's a little bit too much for this video, so I'll have to make a separate video talking about that. Now, as far as my favorite catch is concerned, well, that's a simple one. It's this here. We have here two True Blue Legacies on one train. Now, for you younger rail fans, you may not remember the old Oakway leasers, but there's an interesting story behind them. But let's talk about that Conrail Quality SD70 in the lead. The Conrail Quality SD70s were actually ordered by Norfolk Southern, which is why they're built to Norfolk Southern specs. And they're actually numbered for the Norfolk Southern, which you can see this is completely unpatched. I mean, this is in pure Conrail blue, no black number, no yellow number. They were ordered. They were ordered by NS, but they were delivered to Conrail in Conrail blue in preparation for the merger. And, you know, it's funny because when I'm chasing trains, at least back in this time, this is another one from 2004. Back when I was chasing trains, I didn't even have a scanner. I literally just went to the tracks and hoped that I saw something. If I remember correctly, I saw this train from the Nanakoke Hanover line and followed it down to here. Right now, we're looking into Makanakwa. This is Makanakwa, Pennsylvania, and this is a southbound. So this could be a 458, um, but I don't know. I, I don't know what this train was other than that it's a southbound, no doubt going to Enola. I followed this train all the way down to Nescopec. Along the way, I caught it again in an area called the Narrows. And the reason it's called the Narrows should be pretty obvious to you. This was a favorite stopping point of mine back in that time. I haven't shot there in a long time, though. But this is, um, this is called Pond Hill Road. And it's just south of Makanakwa. I'm not sure if you would call this area Makanakwa or Wapwalapin. I call it Wapwalapin. But nonetheless, this is Pond Hill Road between Makanakwa and and Wap Wallopin. And during this time, I caught a couple of different trains here that had some pretty interesting power. This was one of my favorite. This is actually my favorite. I mean, you got it. That Conrail Quality Blue looks good. The Conrail Quality slogan that came in the early 90s, like around 91. That came around the time when uh, I think Union Pacific came out with that We Will Deliver slogan. Union Pacific made it came a little bit later, but. The early 90s was a time for buzzwords on railroads. I remember Trains Magazine did an article on that. And at the time, NS had something going too. Uh, it might have been that Operation Lifesaver. But I don't. all I know is that the, that the early 90s was a time when railroads were reaffirming their commitment to quality because that was a time when a lot of things were going wrong. A lot of mergers were being anticipated, which unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your point of view, came to fruition. A rail fan acquaintance of mine chased another true blue legacy of the rails through roughly the same spot that I'm shooting at. You can see why they call it the Narrows. <laughs> it's very narrow. Sometimes, literally, you, you feel like you, you can almost reach out and touch the train. It's something else. I've paced one or two trains through here, but I, I don't do it very often. But if you're ever in the area and you like pacing trains, this is a great place to do it. This is Pond Hill Road between Wapwalapin and Makanakwa. But now we come to the part that I really want to talk about, and that's that second unit, the 9047. That's an old Burlington Northern Oakway lease unit. Now, first of all, Burlington Northern Power has never been in abundance on this line. I mean, it, it seems like when it comes to this area, Burlington Northern Power shows up in spurts. I mean, you'll see one, and then you'll see them quite a bit for a couple of weeks, and then you won't see them again for a year or two. Uh, 
those Oakway Leasers, there was only a hundred of them. And they were painted in a slightly modified EMD demonstrator scheme. They were leased to the Burlington Northern. They, they predated the city rail locomotives that you see now, those, city, those real pretty silver city rails. These came long before them. It's funny because for the first time in the industry, the Burlington Northern began purchasing power by the hour from a group of 100 SD60s that were owned by EMD and they were leased to Oakway Incorporated. Now this is where it gets funny because Oakway was actually a subsidiary of the Cornell Rice and Sugar Company which was a New Jersey corporation. So you're talking about locomotives that weren't being, lo or that weren't being leased from a bank or equipment leasing company. The 100 SD60s, they were built between October and December of 1986, and the units were numbered between 9,000 and 9,099. One of the most visually unique spotting features of these engines, on the exterior anyway, was the winterization hatch over the lead radiator cooling fan. A couple engines had this, and they were primarily western engines. Uh, Great Northern had them, Chicago Burlington and Quincy had them, and I'm pretty sure that the Chicago and Northwestern, yeah, they, they had them too. These engines had the job of moving coal out of the Powder River Basin, which old U30Cs and U33Cs were doing at the time. These engines predated the SD70 Max that, that uh, BN eventually got, and they also got the, BN also had the SD60 Max. I think BN's the only railroad that had the SD60 Max. If you know differently, let me know in the comments, but I think BN was the only one that had them. Some of the common assignments they had were moving coal south of the lines to Denver. They worked on the joint line to Pueblo, Colorado, and also down to power plants in Texas. Working on the former CB and Q east-west main line out of the lines to Grand Island and Lincoln, Nebraska, to the Midwestern power plants. After about 10 years of hard use, the pretty paint schemes and whatnot began to show its age. The silver painted trucks were layered with road grime and were eventually repainted black. The EMD herald on the nose began to fade, but they continued on in service. I don't know if they're still intact or not, if the fleet's still intact. I can tell you that there's at least six of them running about 45 miles north of here on the New York, Susquehanna and Western. 3600, 3602, 04, 06, 08, and 10. The gap in the sequence of the locomotive numbering of these engines is because of how the Susquehanna numbers their locomotives. Cab numbers that end with an even number are multiple unit locomotives. Cab numbers of locomotives that end with an odd number are not multiple unit locomotives. Multiple unit locomotives are locomotives that are capable of hooking up more than one unit like you see here. I pointed out that I had caught several trains down in the uh, down in the narrows there. Here's another train, another SD70, but this one's painted Norfolk Southern proper. What's the number on that? 2537. So that's actually a Norfolk Southern bought unit. What I mean by that is that's a, a locomotive that was bought by Norfolk Southern for Norfolk Southern. The Conrail unit was bought by Norfolk Southern for Conrail in anticipation of the Norfolk Southern takeover. In fact, 2557 to 2580, there were 24 of these units, I say, there were 24 of the 
blue painted Conrail quality SD seventy M's deliver SD seventies delivered to Conrail for Norfolk Southern, purchased by Norfolk Southern. The 2537, that's one of the original ones that Norfolk Southern bought. And it's leading three Union Pacific diesels through the Narrows. The last place we catch this train is a few miles south of the Narrows at the junction of River Road and Wap Wallopin Road. Wap Wallopin Road is just Pond Hill Road. Now we're actually in Wap Wallopin. This spot here is just south of Wap Wallopin. And... It was a favorite spot of mine only because of the fact that I could get this vantage point. But as far as an aesthetics point of view is concerned, I tended to frown on this location because let's face it, unless you know you're looking at Wap Wallop and you're looking at uh, River Road overpass, this could be anywhere on the East Coast. I mean, heck, this could be anywhere in America. There's nothing defining about the location. It was just the fact that I could get this shot with the, with the train coming head on at you. It made it a kind of a, a, a rail fan spot of mine.